obviously, uh, you all have a number of distributed energy assets. So how do you develop software for them? What are some of the troubles or challenges you have faced during software development? Um, and how does your, your hardware design uh, play into the decisions you make in this process? A lot of questions. I can read through them all. So I'll start. Um, I'll go a little quickly and pass on to Mark since he's the expert here. Um, but you know, one thing that's really critical to the way we de develop and deploy software is to try to make it repeatable. So rather than coding specific firmware for each device, we try to have a single package that we can deploy to any device and then may act differently depending on the generation of the system it's on. So we've had multiple iterations of our product over the last few years, and so having being able to deploy this one software package saves us a ton of time, um, but then still we have to be cognizant of how it's going to play with all of the other systems. Um, in terms of the last question, uh, the hardware, you know, the hardware is critical for us. I mean, at the most basic level, uh, there's other things we do with the software, but at the bottom line, it has to enable the hardware. So any changes that have to be made on the hardware side, any improvements, and we really have to look at that and figure out what it's going to impact on the software side, which is what you know, Mark will talk about now. Yeah, I mean, the way that I envision the hardware as a software engineer is enabling the software, especially when it comes to high um, You know, what, what we're trying to do here is basically architect and design a system from the ground up that allows for not only the control that we would like to see right now in terms of like being able to provide, um, for example, you know, our clientele are mainly people who are looking at high multiple units or looking at this problem. How would someone manage it? How would someone, what would they want to control? What are the, are the statistics and data that they're going to want to get out of it from a larger corporation point of view? Maybe like, maybe look at our or looking at how their units are going to be applied and how they can prove that more appropriately. And so we are trying to switch on this now just considering, you know, what control do I want to have? to be able to make that transition to whatever state I want to go into. It's, it's a question beyond that of what are the, what are the down the line roadmap items, but also what might somebody want to be able to do to this um, And how can that inform further business decisions both for ourselves and for the organization we're supporting. Um, so in the long run, you know, what, what's really been difficult to kind of answer that question specifically though is that now, most IoT devices, and what makes our IoT device different, very much in my mind, is most IoT devices are they're trained on like, you know, they're, they're doing something very fine. You know, they're doing an on-off function. They may not even know if the light bulb is working. You know, and it's pretty, it's pretty element. Um, and what we're trying to do is really build a system where, let's just say, you want to turn on a unit 3,000 miles away, and you're a fleet manager, and you're trying to help somebody out. That's great, but the unit should be able to tell you if there's something wrong. Like, you shouldn't be able to do that action. And it should be able to tell you why. Like, there, the intelligence we're trying to build into this device is elemental to the rest of the device in the fact that we should be able to, especially when we're dealing with high voltage battery packs, be accurate, like, able to figure out whether or not something is appropriate action. Um, and that requires really thinking about um, not only the intelligence on the device, but also thinking about how you architect the system um, that kind of goes beyond the standard IoT guidelines that most every other company is using right now. So that, that's kind of like the biggest challenge in, in, in an overview. I mean, you, you use standard protocols, but you break them sometimes. So you have to build them, you know, find new libraries, or build your own library. And um, obviously from an engineer's perspective, I, I love breaking things, obviously, it, it's a lot of fun to kind of watch something that you know is being used in the industry, used to its capacity and beyond that, um, but then secondarily, kind of figure out a way to move beyond that step and, and kind of feel as, as though I, I'm part of moving the idea of IoT being just this light switch to something a little bit more intelligent and thoughtful. 